Can these two tips fix your guitar recordings forever? Let me show you how switching focus allowed me to change my guitar recordings from this to this. Let's hear those two again, just the clean DIs. Well, this is my theory and the two areas I think you should focus on before you start blaming your interface or your amp sim or even your cables. So what makes a good guitar DI and what makes a bad guitar DI? I'm about to go through two areas to focus on in order to get pro sounding guitars and explain how the exact same guitar amp and cab can produce these two very different sounding tones. If you're looking for someone to mix your next pop punk or metal song, head over to terrybeckleyrecording.com let me know about your project on the contact form and I'll get back to you. So as you can see, I'm using the Archetype Nolly from Neural DSP on both the bad DI and the good DI over here and have a look. The tones are exactly the same. So how can they sound so different? And what is it that's actually making them sound so different? Full disclosure, it is a different guitar. However, the pickups were both EMG 81s. They're exactly the same. The most important difference was that one guitar could stay in tune and the other could not. But just listen here to the difference that it makes on the guitar tone when one guitar is pulling in and out of tune and the other is dead in tune. So this is the bad DI. That sounds horrible. And this is the good DI. That is so much better. And it's just how well the guitars can stay in tune. But what does that mean? How exactly do you get your guitar to stay in tune? Obviously, you want to tune it properly in the first place and you want to have it well intonated so that it stays in tune up and down the neck. But that's not really what I'm talking about here. It's actually way more simple, not easy, but way more simple to ensure your guitar stays in tune. So the most important thing is to get the correct string gauge for the tuning that you're playing in. If you're playing in drop D, drop C sharp, drop C and lower, you need thicker and thicker strings. The reason being when you hit those open notes, you don't want to hear a pitch bend as soon as you strum it before it starts to get itself in tune again because the string is too thin to take that kind of lower note. I recorded this in drop C sharp and I used the Daddario XL117 strings, which has a gauge of 56 to 11. So the thickest string had a gauge of 56, which is why it was able to stay in tune when I was playing the open chord. The bad DI had thinner strings. I think it was gauged, I know, I know they were gauged tens. I don't think they had a particularly heavy bottom on them. It was a few years ago now. And that's why when you can hear the tuning going all over the place when you start strumming an open note. But mechanics aside, there are things you can do while you track and while you're recording to, to ensure the best tuning possible. And to get these guitars to be in tune and also be able to be strummed hard enough so you get a decent tone out of it, you're going to want to obviously make sure that your takes are tight and played well and strummed well. But most importantly, this allows you to, especially if your guitar is particularly tricky to keep in tune, that you are retuning it after every take. And it sucks the fun out of guitar recording. It makes it really meticulous and painstaking, but it makes them in tune. And I can tell you the dopamine release you're going to get from hearing the whole song recorded in chunks in perfect tuning is going to be better than just recording the guitar in bigger chunks and enjoying it, in my opinion. I remember this the first time I ever went to a proper studio and how we literally broke it down to maybe two, three chords at a time and we retuned every single time and it sucked. I hated it, but it sounded so much better than anything I'd ever done and it taught me so much about what actually makes good guitar sounds or good guitar tones. Another great tip is to use a tuning reference to make sure that your guitar is actually in tune to the rest of the world and not just to itself or maybe if your tuner is set strangely, which can happen, it's happened to me in the past. So I like to use something MIDI that's been sampled that I can use to constantly check the tuning to make sure the guitar is in tune with that. Therefore, I know it's gonna be in tune with the vocals and the, the rest of the world uh, and, and stick to those standards. You'll be amazed how esoteric you can get and everything's in perfect tune, but once you take that out into the other world and use other instruments, it's out and the guitars suck and they're making the whole production sound bad. And the last note on tuning is it can be very easy to forget to check that your DI is in tune. It, distortion obviously masks these kinds of things pretty well. So it's great to take the, the amp off and check the DI and make sure the DI sounds good by itself. It's not sounding like this. 
That sounds horrible. You want to make sure that it sounds like this. Which is so much better. So let's recap. The right strings for the tuning you're playing in. Record in smaller chunks and retune after every take. Use a tuning reference to make sure that your DI is in tune with the rest of the world. And check your DI without the amp sim. Now on to the second tip, which is only possible if you've listened to the first tip, and that is pick attack. With high gain guitars, especially in faster songs, if you can't hear the pick attack in the guitar tone, it just sounds like a washy mess. And I can show you that when I go to the open chord on the bad DI, you stop being able to hear the different strums and therefore you lose the rhythm. Yeah, the drums will carry it to some extent, but you lose that punch and the impact of the guitars when it just sounds like one big washy note. And it can be demonstrated here where I couldn't strum hard enough to get the pick attack to come out because the guitar was just going out of tune. So I had to strum gently and it just led to a rubbish sounding production. That just sounds rubbish. Compare it to this, where you can hear each strum strongly. You can hear the pick hitting the strings. You can't in the other one because I'm so scared because it's just going wildly out of tune. I know with the good, the good guitar, the good DI, where I'd done everything properly, correct strings, tuned it in between takes, I could dig out those notes and you can hear the pick hitting the strings. And it's not going out of tune. And that's what leads to good guitars. And then a bonus tip, the good DI, I was dampening it at the nut. The springs in the guitar were coated, so they weren't resonating. And I taped down the strings I wasn't plucking so that you didn't, I didn't accidentally catch the, the higher strings. And you can hear those problems affecting the clarity of the bad DI. Let me play it to you again on solo and you can hear those like open, unintentional parts of the sound coming through. Now listen to the properly treated guitar and you'll, you'll hear none of that. They are just the notes I want to hear. No other strings, no openness. It's dead between the notes so it doesn't, with high gain amps, it doesn't cause all that extra noise. So don't be lazy. Make sure you dampen where you need to dampen and tape down the strings you're not using or take them off, which I've seen people do. So let's recap. Perfect tuning leads to great strumming because you can have confidence that you can dig those notes out properly. And that's what gives you clarity in your DIs. And that's why when I play you these now back to back with the high gain amp, you can just hear the difference between the two. And that comes down to two things, tuning and pick attack. So let's listen to the fast part of the song and hear the two guitars back to back. <laughs> It just sounds terrible. The bass in there would, would hold it down a little better and you could mask it in the production. But then you don't have great guitars. Have it in tune. You don't need the bass. The bass and the guitar complement each other. You haven't got to hide it and it sounds way better. Hopefully you're hearing that. You could just hear how bad it is as soon as it goes to the open note. It just all falls apart. Whereas with the good DI, that's way more listenable. So they are my two top things to focus on to get better sounding guitar DIs that I think are more important than what amp you use, what amp sim you use, what cables you use, what interface you're using. They're all irrelevant if you don't have in tune, well played guitars that are properly treated. And it's simple, it's not easy necessarily because it is painstaking and it does require extra effort, but you haven't got to go and buy anything. You can just work harder and you'll get way more results than going and swapping out your interface or swapping, go buying a new amp sim because you're blaming the cabinet IR. We've all done it, we'd rather buy something than work a bit harder, me included. But when I saw the difference, I thought it's worth way more to me to put the time in than just to go and buy something that's not gonna solve my problem. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing more and more pop punk and metal related videos like this. Let me know if there's a video you'd like to see and if I know something about it, I'll make it. Thank you very much for watching. Head over to terrybeckleyrecording.com and contact me if you'd like a mix for your next pop punk or metal song. And I'll see you at the next one.